All right, guys. I'm gonna be a little slow on uploading videos because I have a new project. Today I'm supposed to upload, but instead of doing a review video, I'm gonna be tearing this engine apart. So I'm gonna pull it all the way out and then tear it down, I guess. It's got a blown head gasket. We uh, drained this coolant reservoir, filled it with water, but that's no bueno. You should have seen what it looked like. And then the oil, that's the oil. So water in the oil and water in the oil has some color to it, but definitely has water in it. We did a blown head gasket test. I guess I could have uploaded a video on how to do that. But basically you put a little cylinder tube right here with some blue liquid. You run the engine and if it turns green, blown head gasket. We were pretty much certain that it was a blown head gasket, but just for a tip for you guys, there is an oil cooler down there. You can see the orange oil filter. You see that metal housing right above it there's two little tubes coming off of it we actually bypassed those hoses to see if uh, it was that we also took it off and um, ran water through the water inlet to see if oil was coming out I mean water was coming out um, we also with the engine running left it like that to see if oil came through the water sprockets but it didn't so Pretty certain that that should be good. Definitely a blown head gasket though. It's a cheap part if you want to just make yourself feel a little bit better. Replace it anyway. I replaced it when I did the blown head gasket three years ago. I uh, didn't have the block surfaced because I thought I was selling the car. But anyway, we're back at it. So we're going to do it right this time. Piston rings, um, cam crankshaft bearings, resurface the block. The head should still be good, but since we're taking the block down there, we're probably going to take the head down there and have them check it to make sure it's not warped or cracked. So anyway, we're going to put this car in service mode, which means we're going to take this whole front end off. Um, in theory, it could just slide a foot or two out and you could leave it like that. But since we're taking the engine out, we don't want it in our way. So we're going to take it off. The uh, bumper has been yanked off a couple times, not by me by the female drivers in this house. So this screw isn't attached. There's three screws. You can't see because of the bad, the lighting. Um, there's one here. There's supposed to be another one here. There's another one here. Anyway, those are no longer attached. And then there's a uh, Torx up here. Um, I got that one out. It's this bolt right here. I'll show you where it's at on this side. I need to turn the wheels. You can turn the wheel, put the key in and turn the wheel so it's not in your way. You can see the bolt right here. We replaced this one with a hex one. So there's a nut on the top of it because it was no longer being held in. So that's gonna make it harder for me to get off, but that's not gonna be your problem. I'm gonna get those screws out. Let's see where I'm at. I'm gonna turn the wheel too to make it easier. Got those out. Next, we need to take the grill off. Part of taking the grill off is you need to remove. Oh wow, that looks. Oh never mind. I thought that was um, JB Weld. You see, there's a metal clip there. You have to pull, lift that up from the back side, and then separate the two teeth. I'll see if I can show you, but my camera takes up the whole space, so I don't know if I'll be able to show you that. But anyway. First, we're gonna take these off. Now, well, that's probably a T30. I have a T27 right here. I can make it work because they're not too tight. Then these are the grill nuts screws right here. T27 fits. Maybe a T28 would fit better, but it works. Gonna remove these two. Remove this pull latch, and then um, it should lift up. I don't think there's bolts on the bottom. I think it's just tabs, if I remember correctly. It was like three years ago, but we'll see. We'll have to remove the headlights as well. There's two bolts here and there's two more bolts. I'm 
in one of my future videos I'm going to restore these foggy headlights. I was going to do it today, but I had to replace the head gasket first. some little screwdrivers for this tab thing. In fact, we do need to remove this, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it now if I can. See that metal clip? I took a flathead screwdriver and I stuck it in like this and lift it up. You need to hold that up, but actually you might not have to. You take another screwdriver, you need a fatter one, and you separate these two things while holding this tab up and the whole thing will come off. And don't, don't uh, think I'm lying to you when I say that this thing's not fun to put back on because it's not fun to put back on. Oh, that tab went back down. But got it off. So now this thing slides out. By removing these two bolts, this whole thing's pretty much loose. There's supposed to be some bolts in the front, but I thought that held the, I thought it held the, um, to the frame, but I don't know. I'll look if there's a bolt hole there. We could either move this and just, well, there's a connector, by the way. There's a connector down here, but, um, we can either just leave the cable attached and just swing it up here. The cable's long enough and it goes back that way. We could just either leave it that way. Anyway, I took those bolts out and I took the latch, the little pull tab off. So now this grill pulls upward. Lift it out a little bit, pull it straight up. It's got tabs on the bottom that are designed to get pulled straight up. All right. So that's one piece. We're gonna take the whole bumper cover off. Set it aside. There's supposed to be three screws right here. There are three torque screws that cover this. Actually, I want to put these screws back in here so I don't lose them. Actually, where was it? Oh, it was here. That's going to hold the cover, bumper cover on, so I guess I'll leave it there. Anyway, three torque screws hold this on. This pulls straight up. This is kind of a weird way of getting it out, but I pull this side up first. Nothing holds it on, it's all clipped in. And I swing it to the back of the car, wiggle it out. It doesn't really want to come out very well. And make sure you don't lose these little metal clips because that's what your screw's going to. It looks like we're missing one, but backyard mechanic, what do you expect, right? All right. Um, what do I want to do next? There is a um, couple bolts up here that hold the bumper to a frame. So they're going to be the, I'm going to use the T27. If you don't have this set of Torx sockets, buy it. I got it at Walmart for like 20 bucks and it was worth it. Makes it way easier. I have some bits. I couldn't find the bits that I have. I had them up here. Perhaps I lose them all. Um, here's some. I have these bits that go into a socket, but they're not fun to deal with. They fall out of the socket, so definitely worth getting that. All right, so I'm going to remove these four bolts here. One of those little magnetic bowls that you can put all the bolts in. Very nice to have. There's some tabs here. They actually, you need to pull the bumper 
this way for it to come off the front. Um, there are some bulbs in this thing, so there's a connector in here. Oh, see, it's sliding off already. Okay, I believe they twist. Hang on, I'm just gonna slide it down onto the ground, I guess. Oh, scratch it up, okay? Make sure to scratch it up. Oh yeah, I guess we got the fog lights too. Forgot about that. I can't do this with my camera in my hand. So this bulb actually pulls straight out. There's some tabs here that kind of make it lock in a little bit. For this, there's a tab on the top. You stick a screwdriver in the opening right here and push down, it releases it. Then you can slide this forward. Really hard to do everything with two hands. With one hand, I need two hands. And I'm trying to look through the camera so I can make sure it's being recorded too, so. Okay, well, that side's off, so I'll get this one off. That's how to remove the bumper. So Muppet Dog, Muppet Dog, Muppet Dog, Muppet Dog got scared. It's a Muppet Dog in a dress. It's a Muppet Dog in a dress. She likes her dresses and her sweaters. I'm opposed to the dress, but the sweater's okay. All right, so I guess headlights would be next. Um, if you, further in the video, we're going to remove these bolts. And um, first we're going to take this bumper off. It's got a big bolt in the top and a nut on the bottom. Two of them. And then uh, we'll get into that later. Headlights. Got two bolts here. One here. One here. I don't remember where the other ones are. There's one here. And the last one. I don't know if it's shared with this one. It looks like it might be. Can't tell. I'm going to remove those three bolts and see how loose it comes. T25. Bottom bolt. I don't think that was holding on the headlight. I was thinking it did. Maybe it's supposed to slide in. Okay, perhaps it does, but it's not holding it on anymore. So, oh, well, I guess I will take it off. It looks like this bolt down in here might be holding it on. They're not very tight. And once you break them loose, you can't use the ratchet anymore. Perhaps it's because I have cheap ratchets. Leave it resting there for now. What is holding it in? Oh, there's a bolt back here. There we go. But unfortunately, it's that smaller size. So. Yeah, I'm not gonna about break it loose with this. It's way down there like that. I'll be back. Uh, T25 down there. If I had a set, the reason I'm using this is because it has magnets to hold it. the, the, uh, it in so it doesn't fall out. But it needs to be longer. I put an extension on it, but it needs to be even longer. Oh, 
Looks like that's out. <laughs> it looks like this might be holding it on. Looks like it could be an adjuster too. Minnie, stop barking. I'm gonna get that screw out off camera and I'll be back. Well, the headlight is now loose, but this thing and the fender are both in the way, so I guess I'm gonna have to remove this, but first I'm gonna take the bumper off. Let's find out what size that is. 18 millimeter. And of course the top is spinning now, but it's loose. Oh, it's really loose. There's another one over here. Hey, that one came all the way off. Sweet. The bolts aren't going to be able to come through the top, but take the nuts off. Yeah, that's kind of stupid. So I got to take this thing off no matter what. Okay, well. <clears throat> so, uh, nut or bolt here, bolt here. Bolt here, bolt there, we already took this one off on the other side, and we'll see what it takes after that. There's a little screw here, and a little screw there. I'm going to take all those off off camera, speed it up. I'll be back. Those screws that I mentioned, um, that was all it took. These little screws are still on here, not sure if they all have to come off. Anyway, now we can lift these up and out and I'm putting my nuts and bolts trying to put them back where they came out of so I don't have so many to remember where they were bumper came off add it to the pile that pile is going to get pretty big and this is some plastic crap I have to put plastic crap on cars. And uh, we can put this back. This was on that plastic thing too. But anyway. Um, now we can get the headlight out. I already unplugged it. The connectors. Oh, there's still a. Um, oh, that's a vent hose it looks like. Let's see. The connector is the same as those um, side fog lights. You put the screwdriver in this slot. Push it down and it will allow you to slide it out anyway there's a vent hose that kind of gets in the way that's why I was yanking on it because it's just a rubber hose anyway if you look you can see how clear this side is I mean it's really not that clear but compared to this gonna do a headlight restoration video in the future so you guys know these rubber grommets right here come off and then it exposes that nut that I had a hard time getting to. And I'm getting this one off on, I'm removing this one off camera, but it's the same process on both sides.